And when this England fixture was put into the calendar and positioned before the two games against South Africa, whatever was being said diplomatically, you can be pretty sure that this was essentially viewed as a warm-up game for the so-called stiffer test series to come. It looks and feels a little bit different now, Stuart. Yeah, this is a seriously high-pressure occasion. The New Zealand match had a safety net. England were expected to lose, and so some positives taken out of defeat were broadly accepted. Today, England need to deliver a performance and a win. The crown of England head coach will not rest easily on the head of Andy Robinson should England lose to Argentina this afternoon. The England team... And there's just one change from the side that started against New Zealand last Sunday and it is at number one where Perry Freshwater, now of Perpignan and familiar with Argentinian props based in France, packs down with two men from his former club, Leicester's Julian White and George Shooter the hooker. White, a survivor from the England pack that last played Argentina at Twickenham six years ago. Danny Grucock in the second row is the other. And today he is partnered by Leicester man Ben Kay. There are more Tigers in the back row with captain Martin Corrie and Lewis Moody wearing six and seven. And England's summer captain Pat Sanderson has number eight on his back. Not his normal club position, but he does get another opportunity to forge an international relationship with England's new scrum half. Sean Perry of Bristol, and alongside Perry is Charlie Hodgson, winning cap number 28 for him today. It's a second cap in a week for England's new boy centre, Anthony Allen, still only 20, and Jamie Noon is his partner in midfield after scoring two tries last Sunday, but only being allowed one. The wingers are Ben Cohen and Paul Sackey, a golf in of international experience there, and Cohen, in fact, equals Will Greenwood and Wade Dooley on 55 caps today. And fullback Ian Bolshaw, like Cohen, played in the back three versus the Pumas in 2000 on this ground. So what of Argentina, still coached by Marcelo Lafreda with the former England coach and player Les Cusworth, now the director of rugby in Argentina. This is their selection. There are six players in the starting 15 who play in the Guinness Premiership. Loosehead Marcus Ajursa. Another Leicester man is one of them. He's up against clubmate Julian White. Omar Hassan of Toulouse. He props against Freshwater. And Mario Ledesma, like Hassan, winning his 56 cap today. He's the hooker. Sale lock Ignacio Fernandez Lobe is just one behind in cap total and in position in the scrum. And he's with Patricio Albacetti, another man of Toulouse. Juan Martin Fernandez Lobby, the younger of the brothers, is at seven. And from Sale to London Irish, Juan Manuel Leguizamont, a top premiership performer as well. He's at six. Ex-Puma captain Gonzalo Longo is at eight. And the current captain, Augustin Pichot, is at scrum half and plays for the first time this season because of injury. His old friend Felipe Contopomi, now of Leinster, is moved back into fly half from centre. Gonzalo Tiesi, London Irish, is therefore partnered with uh, Miguel Avramovic of Worcester as the two centres. The back three is Pablo Gomez Cora on one wing. He's the only Argentinian-based player in the run-on team. Jose Nunez Piosek is on the other wing with Juan Martin Hernandez, the Stade Francais, and a quite brilliant fullback at times. There are three players today in reserve who, if they come on, will win a first cap. England's old and young in Stu Turner, the sale prop, now 34, the 21-year-old Toby Flood, the Newcastle fly half come centre, and for Argentina, Esteban Lozada, the second row from Club Atlético San Isidro, would make his first international appearance, should he come on. And the Twickenham crowd hoping for the best, perhaps also fearing the worst, could it be a record equaling seven defeats in a row? And if that does not concentrate the mind, then the presence of Argentina will. A side that has beaten France on the last four occasions they have met. And the Pumas, remember, nearly beat New Zealand on home turf in the summer. It's a fascinating prospect watching Argentina. They've only been together for four days. Now, some people will think that's a major hindrance that can't possibly be overcome. But you talk to Les Cosworth and he'll say too much analysis leads to paralysis of thought. He thinks his team, especially the half-backs, will be really intelligent. It's a lovely contrast with England, so professional in their preparation.
There are a whole host of issues that surround Argentinian aid of the World Cup, but today is about one main simple fact for Argentina. Can they win at Twickenham for the first time? Felipe Contopomi is winning his 50th cap. The side was led out by Gonzalo Longo, the number eight. There is the captain, Augustin Pichot. But today is about one back for Argentina, that victory for England. It is about ending this losing run. There were signs last week that certain aspects of England's play were moving in the right direction. Three tries, and it should have been four against New Zealand. Not a bad return, but the coaches need to see these players eliminate the errors and piece together periods of pressure to turn England into a winning team again. In many ways, the World Cup, even though it is only a year away, is an irrelevance for England. A victory in the here and now is what is required for Corey and his team. A victory, yes, but also a performance. It's a really difficult situation for England here. They're at the bottom of the trough. They need to start performing, then they get the wins. When they get the wins, they can start to beat the best. Today, they need that balance, and that's what put Andy Robinson and his team under so much pressure. Now, before the anthems, we will have a moment's silence for those who have lost their lives serving their country on this Remembrance Weekend.
national anthem performed today by Andrew Andor. for these England players to feature in three out of the four autumn internationals. This team will be extra eager to impress. Having been given the vote of confidence, it's the one change made at prop Freshwater for Sheridan. The referee is Kelvin Dika from New Zealand. First time he's ever been to Twickenham. And perhaps we should also uh, mention that the television match official today is Peter Allen from Scotland. All smiles at the moment. Seven of this Argentina team based in France. No Corletto or Borges from Stade Francais today. Sadness for the neutrals, two uh, terrific players to watch. But their replacements will be looking to take their chances as well. If England lose, it will be a day for the history books, both in England and Argentina. England had no intention of losing, though. No. Two shots. And away by Hernandez. And Stade Francais, his uh, club teammates, Roletto and Borges, not here, but... And then there's such a fine player. Very important player for Argentina today. England will try and move the full back around with his experience and counter-attacking ability. He's the cutting edge for their backs. Shooter's first throw, and then it's Sean Perry of Bristol, one of the team's vice captains. Three of them named again today. And behind Corey, the overall skipper. Perry back on his feet. England get the put in. Really singing from the home crowd, they're offering their encouragement. It's a bit encouragement needed from last week. Now England's backs did some good stuff, but they were bitterly disappointed with the way that their tight game, which they thought would go all right, was dismantled by New Zealand. Fresh water in with an opportunity, would have played last week had he been fit. And I think England will look for an awful lot from Julian White. Questions asked, and he's against a Leicester teammate. It's going to be interesting in that tight battle. Argentina renowned for their forward play and they uh, put England on the reverse there. Scrappy ball at number eight for Sinison to deal with. He's having a word with the referee, but it's turnover ball because of the power being exerted by that Argentina pack. Almost mirror image of a scrum in the same position against New Zealand last week when Sanderson and Perry couldn't quite get it together. And that's a good initial snap from Argentina again. But England try and disrupt. The Puma ball now. Longo put under pressure there, number eight. And it's a good England drive, this. Inside the 22, they go. Still with Argentina, and it's Hernandez. He kicks again for touch. He does love to have a run, and hopefully we'll see him do that as the afternoon goes on. A balanced play there from the fullback. Plenty of time, stepped inside the cover. Did very well. Here's England. Just having problems. P shot all his experience. Former Bristol man gets the current Bristol number nine, and that's definitely one for the 32 year old Argentinian. And it comes from Grukov at the line out. Hodgson and Ben Cohen is brought, brought into midfield there. 16 stone of quick fire muscle, Ben Cohen. And often used in that role for club and country. This is Anthony Allen now, part of his national side. The young Gloucester player, and there's a penalty to England. 
and they need Leave to win it, that ball and secure it at the breakdown. They didn't do that against New Zealand Off. and put pressure on to lead to penalties. Well, they were actually outplayed by the All Blacks at the breakdown but point, but that's far more encouraging. They started well last week as well. Good line-out ball there, and what Hodgson is good at is flying those quick passes into the midfield. And I, I think today, against Abramovic in particular, England will fancy trying to get inside outside him and I think England will attack that outside centre channel it's a big Argentinian pack I think the men in white will want to move them around if their pack supply the ball expect, expect fluidity not for its own sake because tactically that's the way to play Argentina Charlie Hodgson going for 250 plus points in international rugby and he's got there didn't have his best day against New Zealand did he Five points last weekend. But then he wasn't alone in that. And Charlie Hodgson starts with a confidence building three pointer against Argentina. England get the penalty from the pressure that they put on and get the points, importantly. Follow. Sanderson. Stay, stay, stay. Perry caught in possession again. Ooh, Pressure diff there from Leguizamo. Difficult start for the England scrum half. Pichon. That's of Ramovic of Worcester. Pichon again did well to Ignacio Fernandez Longe, the sale man. Pichon again spins it into midfield. Yes, he with a little chip. Bolshaw shall cover this and does. And no risk taken by the England fullback. Played in this fixture six years ago. When he was at the height of his powers, he's had injury problems and form issues since then, but now back in the England team. That's great work there from the Argentinian pack, just coming straight through on Perry. He's just got to be a little bit quicker. He's normally very fast through the, with his hands through the ball, but Argentina harassing him early on. Good position here, and that's a good line-out. Good throw from Mario Ledesma, full of experience. Over 50 caps along with Hassan and Matthew Fernandez lobby too. Longer approaching the 50 cap mark. We're a long time and together these Argentina forwards. And Pichot more often than not has been behind them at scrum half. Conta Pomi. Oh, there's a chance here, great chance for Aramovic. Through he went, it was well worked by Argentina and they still have a possibility. Conta Pomi, little chip cross field. And it's well taken by Bolshaw as Pablo Gomez Cora was climbing, but he couldn't get above Bolshaw. Number 12, offside. And the referee brings them back for a penalty. Could have been worse for England. It could have been that opening try for Argentina. It should be three points, nevertheless. And as the referee decides there was an offside, and Felipe Contepomi will be the kicker. Well, that was really indecisive from England there. Anthony Allen on the inside on the inside of Allen's shoulder and Charlie Hodgson coming up didn't get there and Argentina had England in a right mess there and you feel that should have been a score the step was right into the tackle but they carved through England there we thought they'd attack Hodgson Allen for both physical and reasons of experience great play from Argentina straight through 12. And Conta Permi will have no problems with this has been playing in the centre for his country, not for Leinster, but for Argentina. He gets his first three points with Todeschini as 10, but Todeschini left out, Contepomi back at 10, England problems at 10 and 12. But look at this, on the left you've got Hodgson, right Allen, and it's just too easy, the hole, the hole here, bang, straight through. Hodgson checked on the drift, Allen doesn't step in, and Argentina through, it could have been worse than three for England, well played Argentina. Caught by Leguizamont, it's there for Pichot. And ben Kay, a tall man, nearly used those inches for a charge down. But Pichot, been there, done it, stayed cool, and got it away. That's, a, that's the first incident we've had in the first seven minutes. Of the little bits that matter, where England have almost come out on top. It's been Pichot and friends skagging England. That time, Kay uses his height to get through but it's the experience of Argentina at the moment that's just held the sway. Good pressure from Kay. He does, in fact, touch it, doesn't he? So that's oh, yeah. why uh, Argentina will be throwing into the line-out. 
when we're ready. Lewis Moody is currently injured. But it's very important for England, the pack and Sean Perry to really just stabilise the game. The forwards are going to win some decent line-out ball, no doubt about that. But Sean Perry's so important, he's picked because he's got a great service. Hodgson has a pass outside, and if Ashton's vision of an attacking game is to be realised, 9, 10 and 12 have to get that ball out wide, as we see Lewis Moody go off. So Perry, central to England's game, picking up. This means that Magnus Lund will come on to win his fourth cap, or really, no, Lewis Moody is staring on his arm man to take off. Doctor's not so sure, and he's still on the field, and the referee with Calvin Zika on the scene too, he's not happy, he can still see blood, see blood and he wants it cleaned he's up got properly. got blood, please, seven. We're not going to restart. Leicester's latest blood-splattered blonde number seven to we wear the England shirt, and he'll back before him, Lewis Moody. <laughs> Needs a bit more attention on that. Magnus Lund is on. Graham Roundtree did a bit in the blood stakes as well in a Leicester shirt, didn't he? Two shot. Again, the defensive kicker is Hernandez, but that's a good take from Ben Cohen. You're exactly where the touchline was. Ian Bolshaw, hands from Sanderson to Jamie Noon, gets a touch. Saki still waits, but it's coming his way. There it is from a little tap on from Pat Sanderson. Paul Saki. The tackle was coming his way too. That was Cohen picks up. That wasn't great play from Sanders and just tipped up in that ball along to Saki there. He did well just to hang on to it. Perry. Hodgson. Now Corey's in front of him. When he kicked that ball, he is offside. And the referee in consultation with his touch judge had seen it as well. It was a clear one. Well, Scrum back where he kicked it. That's not great not from the England close. captain, is it? He was qu clearly a, a metre in front. You and I could see it from commentary. The touch judge saw it, and that was an excellent kick from Charlie Hodgson. It was a, a missed catch and loose discipline from Corey and Argentina have just driven England back with a remorseless kick. Superb strike there. Poor from Corey, though. So what should have been... An attacking platform for England. He's Just turned into uh, ball, some worrying defence here as Argentina march forward to a situation of great promise. Ledesma, inaccurate so far, and he continues in that vein, taken by Longo. Argentina looking to get the ball rolling. Sam throws a man out. Technique is superb in this aspect of the game. And they get a penalty. Two offences there. In at the side and then the more was collapsed. And Argentina go for the posts to take the lead. Well, this really is due to Martin Corey, a loose bit of discipline there. You can see spotlighted Hodgson. The yellow line is the game line. And quite clearly, you know, in front of your man there, Corey, well offside. There's no excuse for that. And, and a guy with his experience, all those caps, that's poor play from Corrie. It should have been England on or around the Argentina 22. In fact, it's now a chance for Contopomi to give Argentina the lead. Soft penalty. Argentina with their recent record justifying their tag of going into this game as... Uh, Maybe having a more than even chance, certainly not with the bookmakers, but if you know your rugby, if you watch it regularly, you will know just what Argentina have achieved in recent years. Here's an insult now to you. Right, Argentina off. It's just a build-up or easy meet. But that is a bad miss from uh, Contopomi. And it is a big call, moving Contopomi back to 10 and leaving out this a wonder kicker. Continu continuing that fine tradition of Argentinian kickers over the years, starting with Hugo Porter. And Todd Askini on the bench has been left out. Oh. And if it goes wrong for Contopomi, then he will be uh, brought on, no doubt about that. It's going wrong for Charlie Hodgson in these uh, 
opening moments. That was a mistake from him. Out on the full, Lewis Moody comes back. But it will mean a scrum for Moody to join, smack in the middle of the England 22. Oh, that's dreadful from Charlie Hodgson. So two of England's key leaders now, Martin Corrie, a metre offside unnecessarily, and Charlie Hodgson, another key player, has just given Argentina, gifted Argentina, a great opportunity. The mistakes are just... You can't forgive them at this level, that's poor. Can we just come across here? We'll just come. Three, straight please. The square, square. Crouch. Argentina yet to score a try in the three previous full capped internationals on this ground. But this is a wonderful position for them. Go either side here. Need to retain the ball though. England try and commit the numbers to the breakdown to turn it over. And they've done that. Now the ball is out. Perry's wondering whether he can play. The referee says he can. We'll get another chance to do so. And Charlie Hodgson. There's Paul Saki to chase that one. Hernandez. Out of 10. Out of 10. We back off white. Right, right. Touch by Corey. Falls for Perry. And Martin Corey, the captain again. Goes to the handoff on Hassan. Shooter acts as scrum half to find Hodgson and on the line now from Allen to Noon to Bolshaw. Anthony Allen again leaves it fortuitously in a way for Ben Cohen. That's very lateral that back play. No one was really committing Argentinian shirts there. Perry, little step. Yeah, he has to do that to Lost just forward. stop the Argentine drift. Allen. Hodgson, now there is space there, Hodgson saw it, he gets a good bounce, it could really work out for him. Hernandez is there, and he's managed to stay in this time, that's a nimble footwork from Hernandez. Pichot, now Hernandez stands at fly half, Contepomi moves into the centre. TSE can't quite take it, the London Irish man, there's a chance, still might be. It was a great Pablo ball. Gomez Cora. It was a great ball from Contepomi. Moody comes through, makes a tackle, another tackle from England. That time from Grucock. Down goes Fernandez Lobby of the uh, Juan Martin variety. And then Hernandez puts high on Ben Cohen, chased by Nunes Piercek. And that was enough for Cohen to lose sight of the ball momentarily and drop it. Ledesma now tries to drive forward the hooker and does very well indeed there. Ignacio fernandez Love, advantage being played, as you can see. No advantage came, initial knock forward. Scrum, blue. Argentina will put into the scrum. A lot of errors from England, you know, at the moment. That was a good kick from Contopomi, but Ben Cohen will be disappointed to have lost that one. Waiting on their call. You know, once again, that's an unforced error. It's not a bad kick, and you can say Nunez Piasek is so close to him, but Cohen should have taken that. Longo, Perry trying to put the uh, squeeze on, a little bit like uh, Pichot has been doing to England so far in this match. It's still with Argentina, Ledesma standing in the right wing position, and they were waiting, Cohen and Perry, and they put him out. Oh, and that is a uh, little, little bit loose, to say the least, from Ledesma. Needs to apologise and does. Ben Cohen doesn't like it. Now, Ben Cohen hit him first. It's both of them, Miles. Cohen caught Ledesma and he reacted there. Watch this. There's a little dig from Cohen, a little sly one. Bang. Oh, there is, yeah. Don't turn around and look to the referee, Ben Cohen. You just you can't do that, mate. I think the right call from the referee just to let it simmer down. From the back, seven, seven whites at the back, still more. Should really have been a penalty, Argentina. Hand off now, hand off. Away. It could have been uh, reversed, couldn't it, for the retaliation. But I know what you mean. Anyway, P shot to uh, Contepomi and then TSE staying on his feet very well indeed. Nunez Piercek popping up in midfield. 
What a try for Argentina against the Lions in that drawn game just before the 2005 tour. Which was the Argentina's second string. To prove the point again, we come over here. The high quality players that exist within Argentina. Why, why they are not allowed into an international tournament outside the World Cup? Heaven only knows. Miles, we're just seeing with that replay yet again. Hodgson Allen, that 10 12 area is a problem. You can see that's the inside shoulder of Anthony Allen, and he's beaten on that line again. Second time Argentina in 15 minutes have found a hole there. England need to plug that gap very quickly. Plenty of early possession. And Argentina would have been in front had Conte Pony managed to land that second penalty. It was a difficult one, but it was not, nowhere near the place. Anthony Allen adjusting to the uh, rigours of international rugby. Pat Sanderson, more like it. Sean Perry, good break from him, but given away to Longa. Goes for the little chip, it ricochets. Falls though for Pichot. And Ledesma in midfield, England trying to regroup, Argentina trying to find the numbers here. Nunez Piercek. And Bolshaw won't have to play it. Options. England will be given the choice. Well, that's why Pat Sanderson was picked, the dynamism off the base. Good such, good scrum there. Inside ball is excellent, lovely hands from Sanderson. And if this one goes to hand to Jamie Noon, there's a chance. Did Noon get a little bit flat on Perry? I think he did there. Support line has to be a little bit deeper. Of course, I say what that choice was. It was for the scrum on the ball, point where the ball was kicked, or the uh, 22. England go for the 22 dropout. Argentina having kicked the ball dead. No, stay last. Bring us on. And this one just goes over the try line. It doesn't go dead, so there'll be no choice here for Charlie Hodgson when he puts it down. The only choice is uh, whether to think about some outrageous breakaway, but it was a non-option and he goes for the dropout. Jamie Noon was thinking about the quick one, the quick 22. Hodgson restarts in a more conventional way. Long go. Guizamont. Hey, hey, leave your hands! Nunez Piercek. He slips through his fingers. Well, let's go down to the front line for the first time during the game, and it's Dowie. Well, thanks, Miles. Yeah, England really need a better foundation um, and more control. We talked about it in the New Zealand game, really. Pat Sanderson's got to take control over there. That's a classic snag there by Pichot. And also, this is Lobe coming straight through. The guard men aren't doing the job, making Perry's life an absolute misery. Yeah, I was talking to Rob Andrew before the game, and he was just talking about the little things England didn't get right, and New Zealand punished them. Instance in the first 20 there of Argentina doing likewise, and probably for the first quarter they've looked the more streetwise international team. Sanderson. Anthony Allen. Makes a half break, getting away from Contopomi. Sanderson again. Advantage was being played. For a knock on, and the game yet to get into any sort of rhythm from both sides' point of view. You will be disappointed with this first quarter, no doubt about that. Rob Andrew, his expression says it all. But I think we be very disappointed. I mean, the better team has been Argentina. They've only had four days together, so they'd have been worried about the first 20. They're into the game now. They've got a foothold on it. England just can't establish any foundation and from that build pace into their game. And that, above all other things, is what they're trying to do. When they talk about developing, progressing, they're trying to put pace onto the game to find space. And if you don't play at pace, you can't do that. Stay down, seven blue. Terry to Hodgson. Jamie Noon is deep, he's going with a kick. Hernandez looks for the counter, over the top of Saki, and takes his own kick. That is beautiful play. But Anthony Allen was there, he covered. But now it's been lost forward by Allen to Longo. And through goes Albacete. And England scramble back in defence here. Pichot sends there was something on the short side. And Matthew Fernandez lobby is there. To pull it back in tight. We weren't 
quite the number of attackers that Pichot was hoping to find. But Argentina still on the attack. And they're going back to Hernandez for the drop goal. And he's wide with that. Yeah. He's the man who started the attack and it was uh, quite brilliant, wasn't it? England kicking accurately and Hernandez, the stab fullback. Such a clever runner. We said he's probably their most important and most incisive runner and so it proved there. That. That's a lovely control on that kick. Forces Noon and Allen to turn and you can see now it just steps up for him and Allen does well just to track back as Hernandez is through and whoa, that could have been another score for Argentina. Again, it's Charlie Hodgson restarting from his 22. England locked inside their own half at the moment. Nunez Piercek, Corey. He's got it now. And he gives it to Perry. And that's a good long kick from Sean Perry. Not the best angle to work with, but he made the most of it. And then he gets a round of applause for that kick. Well, that'll um, encourage Sean Perry. He hasn't had the easiest start, but that's a superb spiral. 15 metres out, right foot, that's a fine kick. One of the reasons he's in over Peter Richard is the size of his kicking game. He gets great distance and that was excellent. And England need a foothold in the Argentinian, uh, Argentinian half because Argentina have established some control. Desma of Clermont of Verne. Formerly of Narbonne and Castro, the Argentina hooker. So many of the Argentinian players based in France now. He shot one of them, Contopomi, with Leinster of Ireland. And that takes it up to halfway, and it's a series of line-outs down this near side. Very comfortable, aren't they, the visitors at the moment? They're controlling the tempo of the game, they're controlling most of the territory. Probably feel they deserve to be a few points in front. Talk about how important this period is for England, but also for Argentina. I mean, with the squad they've managed to assemble over the last few years, there is a feeling that they could cause some genuine damage at the World Cup. They're in the group with France and Ireland. Somebody's going to have to go in that group, and it's going to be uh, good to watch. Here's Dowie again. Yeah, thanks, Miles. It's about the uh, the youngsters out there. This time, Alan doing very well to get back for Hernandez, intercepting. Again, it's the crucial position in the body. He doesn't quite get it right. The support isn't there. Technically, that isn't good. The ball comes out, and Argentina just wave on. They've got to protect this ball. They've got to get their technique absolutely spot on. He's learning so much, is Anthony Allen. He's always got L plates on, hasn't he, in international terms. One of those... Uh, crash course has learned to drive in a week New Zealand one week Argentina the next well it's a fast learning curve and it can be a brutal one at time and Anthony Allen clearly is not finding this easy at the moment and Argentina they're pretty smart in their choice of tactics they're really looking to get between Hodson and Allen and they've had some su success this is interesting call as well isn't it Miles that substitution that changes a lot about Argentina's back play and Federico Todeschini has come on the man who's quickly amassed 165 international points. He is a top kicker, and he's on for Tiesi, who's had to go off and wins his 12th cap. And he's based in France too. Todeschini with Montpellier. George uh, Shooter, the England hooker of Leicester. Todeschini, of course, people with a decent memory will remember just how well he played for Argentina against the Lions in Cardiff before they went on tour. Really superb performance. And with, with Contopomia inside centre, that adds the ballast. Cohen, and still, England need to inject some life here. They've lost it forward. Whistler's gone from Kelvin Dika. Just on that injury, by the way, uh, to Tiesi. It is exactly that. It's not a uh, tactical change. Yes, he's gone off injured. Once again, England breaching the game line as they did on a number of occasions against the All Blacks and then just not able to hold on to the ball. It's a good change of angle, a good surge from Cohen, and then he just loses it. Now dropped by Pichot. Everybody's catching it. The disease, that is, not the ball. That England to put in. That's a rare moment, really, where it's been a soft Argentinian error that's allowed England a foothold. It's mainly been the other way. 
the shot will be disappointed. And England will be looking to orchestrate something here. They just need to galvanise this crowd as well. It was quiet last week and it's a little bit... Got the feel of a library at the moment. Marita Hodgson. Here's Allen. Oh, that's nice. Let's show the ball from Anthony Allen. This is what he can do. And there were flashes of that against New Zealand. Perry hanging on to the ball, needs to release that now and does. Hodgson to act as scrum half. Noon in the standoff position. Sarneson as centre. Now it's coming in at the side from Argentina. Crowd have seen it. Here's Jamie Noon, a little step himself. He looks to use his power. Good pick up off the floor. Grucox got it. Shoot a low. Lost it to uh, Freshwater. Another knock on. Frustration builds for the players and for the England supporters. Uh, the first glimmer there from England. Uh, that was a lovely break from Anthony Allen. I just wonder well, should he have given it outside? I think Cohen had come round. Hodgson flat. That's superb. Saki the decoy. Oh, he should have given that ball to Ben Cohen. Should have given that ball. Just over 25 minutes into the match as Hernandez. <laughs> that is neat. As he gets the ball out. It's the first time that England have been inside the uh, Argentina 22 with that attack. They're looking to go inside again. Ben Cohen with that direct style of his. Perry, Hodgson, Allen. Now the noise builds. Jamie Noon. Pressure on Hernandez now. But he's first there. Touches the ball down twice, just to make sure. Well, England finally starting to build a bit of pace and momentum into the game. Long time coming and Todeschini will probably slow it down there. First bit of real pressure that Argentina have had to face. And England will feel that that's a chance gone. They wanted to be more efficient, they wanted to be more ruthless when they got behind the defence. Hasn't happened in the last five minutes. Here's Paul Saki, he'll be encouraged to go forward. And he'll need a second invitation, Paul Saki. Loves to have a run, like all wingers. Hey, no, Corey, Hodgson, and Sanderson, Perry, Shooter, performing the winger's role of sorts. It's good driving there from... George Shooter staying on his feet, allowing the forwards to arrive. Argentina, a man down injured. Hodgson, and it's Allen to Noon. Bolshaw, the fullback involved. More urgency about England now. In goes Moody. Building the phase play, holding on to the ball. Corey now loses the ball. Albacete, first to react. Off the floor from uh, Longo, that was nice. Gomez Cora. Pichot. Contapomi. Todeskin, the replacement. Nunes Piercek. Ben Cohen trying to push him out again, but another player knowing exactly where the touchline is. Ball should be there, England trying to drive through. Pichot eventually arrives, he was uh, woefully late on that one. Allen to Hodgson. And Longo is back. Number eight takes the kicking option. And he's done it very well indeed. Delicate touch there. England winning them. One at the breakdown here, Argentina very slow to get numbers, and in the end you can see Grucock through first and then Kay's second round mate, Pichot a little bit slow. You could say England a little bit slow so far in this game. Signs of an attempt to accelerate, but only signs so far. Shooter finds Grucock. England get the penalty. It was two men, dragged them all down. Explained by it's Kelvin Deeker. There was two men.
Got some kicks, England will throw in, Stuart. Uh, Anthony Allen's difficult afternoon continues. Is it a two-on-one? What, what, what do you look here in the spotlight? The ball is under the right arm. If it is a two-on-one, he has no chance at all because he can't pass there. You can see, Cohen's coming on the outside. What possibility of passing? None. He hasn't looked. He's gone for it himself. Just has to be technically a bit sharper than that. And that was the first real chance for England. Not taken. Well, making his England debut in the past few days, but also his Heineken Cup debut this season. Penalty, Sean Perry, another new man to this England team. And that's what he's been doing at Bristol for a season and a bit now. Well, that's not allowed to go, not 10 metres. Could be valuable ground as well. Well, England needed that. They just needed to somehow establish a bit of pace on this game. And Perry, with the confidence, as you say, to do what he does for Bristol, does it for his country this time. And those 10 metres gives Charlie Hodgson a, a chance to put England in the lead. And it will be a lead that probably they wouldn't deserve. Penalty given. Perry just thinks I've had enough of this sluggish pace going. Barged out of the way, first of all, by Albacete, but he keeps going and he's won the penalty. Hodgson's kick stays wide. And you'd have been feeling England were fortunate to be in front there. You sense there are scores here for England, but they've got to keep the pace of this game going. And at the moment, they just aren't winning the little battles, the little bits and pieces to just control the tempo. That's counter attacking ball. Saki, Hodgson, ball short, trying to straighten and go forward, Cohen does the same, supported by Moody and Noon, Perry's there, Anthony Allen, Hodgson, Saki again, looks to go on the outside, oh some lovely little swivel from Saki, Paul Saki going on the outside, oh, what a beautiful try that is! England, a little bit like a patient in need of a good tonic. And that try might set them up for the rest of the day. We shall see. But Paul Saki is the one to administer the medicine. What a good try this is. And the team built it for him. Charlie Hodgson. Superb individual finish, though. Charlie Hodgson standing at mid middle of the field. He puts the big pass in, but it's Saki's elusive run that really makes a try out of a half chance and oh, did Andy Robinson, Rob Andrew and co all of English rugby needed that one Allen stood at first receiver, Charlie Hodson second and then Saki given a chance, lovely footwork and pace that's a great finish for Paul Saki, wonderful moment and Hodson's conversion all of a sudden it feels like a much easier game for England. Paul Saki, that is one of the best individual tries that this ground will have seen for some time. Well, Cora there really beating the left wing on the inside, but then it's the way he comes infield and out to leave Hernandez. That's an outstanding finish from the right wing. Scoring loads of tries in the game this Premiership. He takes that form to the international stage and hats probably the best try of his career it'll certainly feel it wait, wait, wait. Perry to Hodgson this is still live Hernandez running from him and Longo can cover the ground and then as again leaves it to Pichot the specialist passer at the base good example of it Ball not carried forward by Leguizamont. Knock on by Argentina. Yeah, here's another angle of the try. Allen with the first pass. Hodgson you see in midfield, a decoy run and then in-out. The outside break, and now he straightens Hernandez. 
and he has the pace to go on the outside. If he just goes for the corner initially, the full-back gets him, but he checks him, changes pace, brilliant finish. Hodgson kicks. Hernandez. Ball short. Nunes Piasek, come to Pomi, good sidestepping from him now. Argentina might be about to go on a different level because of that England try. Push them a bit further on themselves. So that's good for the game. It was meandering a little bit in that first half hour, to be fair. And to be kind, Hodgson, Perry. Touched. touched in flight, so he's put on side. Hernandez. It's a good kick over the top of Saki. And it's ball shot. Wait, six. Stay here. And this never ending phase, long go. P shot. A little bit of a toss into the air. Technically not great, but it's a decent high ball. And that's a great chase from Argentina. Pichot on this side is Aramovic, and he's out. Just want to go through Saki's try again. Two men circled, Hernandez, Tobia shot, and then Saki. Just watch what he does. He's got a little in and out and in to fix the first man, and then when he's going out, he straightens, and that straighten is what creates it. In out. In out, now he comes straight, and that's what stops Hernandez, and that's your try. Stay last. Sean Perry. Oh dear, didn't like that. Gifting the ball to Argentina, an advantage as well. England offside. All caused by the kick from Perry, and then not retreating 10 metres. The three lets it go, Conte Pomi. And another Argentina penalty in front of the sticks. Go to the line, please. Lobo was actually pointing to Kelvin Dika. Um, as Julian White retreated, saying he's not 10, <laughs> White wasn't trying to stop him. It was a pretty cynical piece of play, but the referee Going just well. said advantage over anyway, and then England conceded another penalty. Signal shot. Two on the trot, and Argentina end up with a very comfortable shot at goal. Todeschini will kick this 10 6 and more head scratching for Corey. Kini taking over the kicking duties. About as easy as they come. Three more points for the Pumas. England 10, Argentina 6, with half time approaching. And again, you have to say it was a loose kick from Perry and it was a pointless offside from England and a second one. And again, this isn't ruthless enough from England at the moment. If not for one moment of inspiration, Argentina would be 6-3 up, and deservedly so. Here comes Cohen. Well, he did touch that one through. Off white. to the touch judge. And then the thank you as uh, the message was relayed. Knock on from Cohen. So it could have been a yellow card as well on another day for the uh, cynical foul by England. Yeah, definitely. Important for Argentina to get those three points immediately. 10-3 down, it could have been demoralising after a decent first half. Now they're right back in this game. Solid scrum, I mean, it's a lovely platform for P-Shot there, isn't it? What do you want to do? Up to you, mate. He's on chair, read the paper, isn't it? Kind of ball. P-Shot now. Hernandez. Yes. The bounce of the ball takes it away from Cohen to Bolshaw. Give it a go, say the crown, and Bolshaw agrees. For Saki. Oh, this time he's tackled, and Argentina know about the threat. 
Ramovic picks up for Argentina. Great tackle from Todeschini. And he's given Argentina another chance. And he's given Todeschini another chance. And uh, he won't be shy from this range, as the Lions will verify. It's the little bits and pieces again, isn't it? Nothing wrong with Bolshoi trying to counter along with Saki there. But this time, Saki lassoed quite literally, and then England concede the penalty, and Argentina have the chance. Yes. The crowd want Bolshoi to counter-attack. Decides not to kick, decides. Saki outside, that it's the right time, but he never has numbers there. And then Todeschini is in with the first tackle. And Saki just holds on to it a split second too long and a penalty for Argentina. And 10-9 would make very nervous reading for Andy Robinson and the England team at half-time. England will go into half-time leading, but they have not played well. They will know they'll need to do a lot more in terms of performance and winning this game. And coach Andy Robinson disappears down the tunnel, looking thoughtful, Todeschini. To reduce the England lead to just one point. And he's given it exactly the right amount. And that's how we stand that at half-time. England lead 10-9. to nine. And they go off to see Andy Robinson and Brian Ashton, John Wells and Mike Ford with lots to talk about because it wasn't a very good England first half performance. It was, though, a fine first half try from that man, Paul Sackey. His first in international rugby in just his second cap. Good team effort before that. It was building nicely, but there was still a lot of finishing to be done. Something old fashioned about the way Sackey loves that outside break. That's his favorite move. And now he's done it for England and he will be smiling at half time but the team will want to smile only after a victory, and that is far from certain. Thanks, Simon. Well, they're up for it anyway, aren't they? England need to be in this second half as well. You can't really make any uh, final assessments at half-time. We've still got... 40 minutes of rugby to watch, Stuart, but I, I take it you're not particularly impressed with that first period. Well, no, I mean, you, you need to give some benefit to the doubt because England are starting afresh, they're rebuilding from scratch, and some of the mistakes are due to naivety. But England did make some progress against New Zealand in the first 40 minutes. Let's just say any progress has stalled. England really need to inject pace and a bit of accuracy into this second half. So what an important second half coming up for these England players and uh, for Andy Robinson and his coaching team. And also for Argentina. England don't use that ball straight away. And Sean Perry was caught. And Augustin Pichot has been around the block. And knows exactly like Kelleher last week to make his uh, opponent feel that he's in it, an international rugby match. Well... Pichot's had an illustrious career for Argentina and as a club player in France and England. But this would be the highlight of his career, I think, if he could lead Argentina to victory at Twickenham. He said it before on the rugby club, he said it down on the touchline. And for a bloke who hasn't played this season, he's done pretty well at the moment. The old mind's as quick as ever. With the forwards, they're going to keep on asking questions of Perry. He shot Contopomi. Right up and under, taken by Charlie Hodgson. Seemed to be turned there. Argentina throw men in and they get the adjudication of referee Kelvin Dika. The tackle was complete, wasn't them all. And once again, it's a Southern Hemisphere side hitting the breakdown with a lot more numbers than England. And because of it, they get the nudge and they get the ball. Little things. Argentina certainly will be thinking, we have a great chance to win this game. Pichot, and Andes. Tries to barge his way past Jamie Noon, which is uh, not easily done. And can go in at the side. There's Lewis Moody. Number five was called Ben Kay. Number seven. Oh, number seven now. I know the England camp felt they had a 
a rough deal of it against New Zealand. They felt Richie McCaw was slipping that black jersey all over the place, anywhere but legitimate, but he didn't get caught, and Lewis Moody did, and that's maybe the difference between a, a good seven and a great seven. The greats know what they're doing. And Charlie Hodgson, he gets turned over, but don't blame Charlie Hodgson, he's in the right place, he makes the catch. But England just aren't quick enough. Conta Pomi chasing a little bit harder than England chased high kicks in the first half. And then you can see his support man there as well. You just get in numbers there in front of England. The reaction of Andy Robinson. Toduskini. 30 points against Wales in the second test in the summer. 20 points against the Lions in Cardiff. And with a lovely stroke of the right foot through the ball. Exemplary technique, three from three, no great surprise. Todeschini, one of the best around. Argentina in front as they go in search of their first ever win at Twickenham. Now this guy is a lovely striker of the ball, very cool temperament. A little bit about the Hugo Porter about him, and I think with Contopomi at 12 now, Argentina's midfield looks more varied as a running team and a kicking unit. Hernandez, it is the midfield that they have been playing over the past few matches, although Argentina, as a unit, haven't played since July. So all this talk of preparation <laughs> in the run-up to these internationals, and that some players were still flying in on Tuesday of this week for Argentina. And we talk about passion, but it's almost patronising, you need more than that, but Argentina have it, they have shape, their kicking game is good, they have variety all over, and it's a test. Nearly given there to Ledesma, who will be kicking himself that he didn't collect that one. Perry, again, learning all the time. But you wonder for how long in this match Peter Richards is on standby. Yeah, just got to stick with some of these newcomers though, they've got to give them at least an hour and try and get momentum, that was a much better scrum. Jamie Noon, the second there's a little bit of space in front of him, good tackle though by Contepomi, had to make it. Bolshaw, Ben Cohen, look threatening every time uh, that he's got the ball, as uh, Dowie was saying at half-time. Here's Hodgson to Allen, Sanderson was the decoy, but he's gone behind Jamie Noon, he then has to provide all the power and pace to get it restarted, and does. Perry, nice pass to Allen, to Hodgson. Again, Hodgson being the second receiver, playing one out from Allen, but Allen's passing left to right, poor as P shots off. Going quickly, Corrie, did he impede? Referee uh, let it go, now it's not forward by Argentina, taken by Corrie. He tries to ship the ball on to England's try scorer Paul Saki. Referee will have to go back for the first knock-on, therefore. A P shot trying to go with a quick tap there, and you can see what he's trying to do. But in fact, I think England probably would like this game to break up a little bit more than Argentina, who are feeling quite cosy about the game at the moment. There's no ball, it's 10 metres away. Stand, please. Not doing badly for a man that hasn't played this season. He's had this long standing groin problem. Wait for him. Created issues with his foot and hasn't played for his club in France, Dad Francais. Yeah, but if you have a valued experience at test match level, you're seeing it today. Perry is an outstanding player and a great prospect, but P-Shot, even though he is rusty, he's been here so many times, he's cool, he's calm, and his mind is working quickly. Perry, he's just trying to suck in the air and get used to the occasion. I'm watching Argentina train this week, P-Shot. There's an awful lot in training, and the players listen to every word. Allen, gain of slowish ball there. Scrappy ball. In the living off scraps, but when they uh, have a chance to get the ball away, they don't do it immediately. Poor kick to Hernandez. Bolshoi. Needs to bring the crowd back to life. He was sparked by the Saki score. But apart from that, very little to shout about. 
here at Twickenham today. It's turnover ball again. Gomez Cora to P shot and Saki, the defender this time. He says that wasn't a charge down, it was a knock on. He was going to the ball. Probably right. This is Fernandez Lobby. Well, Martin Fernandez Lobby setting this one up. The flanker. To the last forward. Nothing coming for Argentina there, put in. And here comes Peter Richards, and England are going to make that change at scrum White half. White earlier than they were planning, but it's not gone for Sean Perry today. He'll get more chances. And now he's replaced by another man of the West Country. Bristol man leaves for Gloucester's Peter Richards to come on. Well, I'm just watching as Sean Perry goes off, hasn't had an easy afternoon, hasn't worked well. Maybe England just need the spark of Richards to change things. Well, let's hear from a scrum half, Dami Morris. Well, it's, it's gone from bad to worse, to be honest, Miles and Stuart up there, because the communication again, 8-9, I know I'm banging on about it, put Martin Corry to 8. This is absolutely ridiculous, they don't know what the heck they're doing out there. In the end, Pat Sanderson, well, just wastes a great opportunity, sort it out. Interesting point, isn't it? It's uh, not all down to the scrum half, it's that link between eight and nine. Uh, that is, you know, I think Dowie just re reinforced there the fact Perry hasn't been served well, but he hasn't had a great game either otherwise, and England perhaps do need the different style of Richards, somebody to break this game up, somebody to really inject some pace. And England now, even though we've still got over half an hour to go, are staring a seventh consecutive defeat in the face unless they can change it and change it quickly Argentina have got their hands back on the ball they have plenty of possession in the first half there's no reason why they shouldn't have plenty in the second half and the longer this goes on with them leading the longer are the more Argentina will intensify their efforts because the inspiration will drive them and with Todeschini there when they get territory they can get points they can get penalties they can get drop goals and as you saw there from P shot the pack are so experienced they know exactly what they're going to do they've got a front row with huge amount of experience they can work field position here and Rob Andrew living every kick every pass on the white Interesting. And he is feeling it, isn't he? And that ain't just the cold. Interesting talking to Les Cusworth this week, and he made the point again to us down pitch side today. You know, when a side does come together yeah, so late as Argentina do, it, it is difficult for them to go through the more expansive moves during the training week. But it's, they're, they're time is so limited in training so it's understandable when they do keep it tied Argentina in a game like this well also I think their back three really without uh, Corletto can't do that but they're playing smart rugby they played smarter rugby than England at the moment because they've been forced to think for themselves and continue to do so and it could be winning rugby now that's better from England driving over driving through Brucock Hodgson and that comes off the side of the boot almost and to touch direct it leads to another shake of the head from Charlie Hodgson but it was better at the breakdown well it was Jamie Noon's initial tackle was good Charlie Hodgson I'm going to be fascinated in his next half hour a player of great technical ability and tactical now has never been at his best though when the pressure has come on his team and as an outside half he has got to pick up England guide them put them in the right places more so than Martin Corry we have an acid test for Charlie Hodgson in the next half hour. He needs to steer England. Ledesma again to Longo. A lot of line out ball today. Oh, and it is Ben Kay who's given away the penalty this time. Todeschini might just think I could pop this over. But I think Hernandez says, let's get in the corner. He played well, hasn't he, the fullback, apart from the sack he missed. And the thing about Hernandez, he can play at 10, 12, or fullback, and look at that kick. Right down into that England corner. And it's not getting any easier for England here. So nonchalant as well, wasn't it? Silly penalty as we see Tom Palmer walking up. And England, you can see, they're conceding too many penalties, especially in their own half, and they're paying the price. Tom Palmer on. 
It's five years since Tom Palmer has played for England, one cap before on the tour to the United States in 2001. And Tom Palmer now of London Wasps, and gone there from Leeds, joins the England pack. Brucock goes off, and Lewis Moody has got that ball at the tail. Just Richards to Hodgson. More convincing strike from the England fly half, but it's still counter-attack ball for Hernandez. Out of 10, Blue! Leguizamon might try and get up there to use his height. Bolshaw just it perfectly. England full back. Anthony Allen. England's new centre. Here go Argentina. They thought the ball was out. The referee didn't agree. Stand back. Stand back, please. And Argentina will be disappointed as well going back to their line out. Great kick from Hernandez to put them five metres out and then they overthrew it and England a chance to clear their lines, but these are nervous moments, and yet again, Anthony Allen doing the right thing in the sense that he's taking on Al Bassetti. oh dear, missed kicks galore, Charlie Hodgson has got to steady this team and himself. And the comparison there with the way Hernandez kicked into the corner, Hernandez kicks again and he gets good length, Richards replies, but now of course Argentina will throw into the line-out, so uh, only one winner out of that exchange, and they're wearing blue and white of the hoops now look at this now look at this charlie hodgson is going to come off we said it's an acid test for england i wonder whether the england selectors have made a very big call this is the most significant substitution of the new rob andrew andy robinson era believe me this is a big call toby flood from newcastle falcons Made his Premiership debut in February 2005. He's now 21, and he's now an England player. On to uh, Twickenham for the first time. 12-10 down against Argentina, and who's going to have to kick? New cap, Toby Flood. Welcome. We're going to find out if the boy can take the pressure. And Palmer took the ball, now it's Flood. To Allen, to Noon. This is Saki, as James Hawke did it for... Where was in Cardiff? And can Flood do a, a similar job here for England in London? Referee gives penalty to Argentina for holding on. First pass from Toby Flood, just moving it out to his Newcastle teammate, Jamie Noon. But again, there is a there's at times a, lar a worrying lack of shape to what England are trying to do as Hernandez finds another good kick. Just watch the pass in here and how far away it is from the defence. Through the hands well. Jamie Noon, what's that? He's destroying no one, he's achieving nothing. Saki gets two men on one. He just can't do that, that's just not... It's not good enough. This guy puts a huge amount into playing for England, but you can't just take a ball, run sideways and just shuffle it across. Not straight, says the referee. Let's go down to Dari as we uh, wait for the restart. Yeah, well, thanks, Miles. Basically, I think Pete Richards has come on and made an instant impact. He's very tenacious out, out there, isn't he, as we know, playing for Gloucester, and he's down on Leguizamon straight away, and he's one of the reasons that actually England won that touch and won that turnover. Sanderson, Richards. Ricochet. England line out. England making another change. Josh Luce is coming on. I think this is for a, a limping Paul Saki. Lucy returns after injury problems of his own. Knee and hamstring. Well, listen to that reaction. I think for Saki's try, but also for the returning hero, Josh Lucy. Popular call. What a fascinating time to come onto this game. We have a, a compelling last 27 minutes. England now are being tested. They had to perform and win. The performance ain't happening, but the win just has to happen. Otherwise, oh, we're in an interesting realm. Sanderson, that's the right thing to do. Pick up the pace. Tap and go then from Pat Sanderson. Uh, we'll really believe. Well, now England will start to think manager will be thinking everything is turning to dross that we do 
We thought it was a big half hour for Hodgson, it wasn't to be. The management took him off. Toby Flood comes on and he's trying to generate some pace and the poor young bloke. It happened to Anthony Allen last week, it's happened to Toby Flood this week. And Todd Eschini, we talked about his danger as a kicker. He has just snaffled a try. And Argentina now, if they kick this, are in one hell of a position. England trying to generate pace. Flood reaches for the pass a bit, tries to find Allen, but Todd Eschini says it ain't going there. Straight through, it wasn't a good pass from Peter Richards. Flood tries to force the pace. England's youthful naivety hurts them. The pass is not a good one there, and Flood just thinks, let's go for it. And you can see the replacement fly half says, only one place for that. Argentina about to be nine points up. Wow. Todeschini about to convert his own breakaway try, which he does. And England are in a right mess now. Well, now we're into the realms of character as well. England came into this game uh, worried about Argentina, but expecting to win and demanding an improvement. Now they have got to fight their way back into this game. But they're not going to fight this game back just by taking Argentina on up front. They need to display something different. Hernandez. Pat Sardison going through to try and charge down Cohen. Hernandez was good enough, as he has been all afternoon, to get his kicks away. Lucy has just chipped that away. First touch, trying to get in the match. He needs to get in it quickly. Bodies of the white wall, and he was coming in at the side. Boots flying in there from Palmer. Brave stuff from Argentina on the floor. England have got it, though. Richards. Allen. There are men outside if Kay can see them. Moody, good hands on to Martin Cole. He tries to straighten, needs to release, that's going to drift forward. Martin Corey just trying to repeat the overhand pass that created the try for Ben Cohen against New Zealand. Argentina, I think, defended very well there when England got that ball. And Andy Robinson looking on. His fingernails are going to be sore at the moment. He's on the precipice here. A lot of numbers should Corey have given it earlier. What Argentina do do is not rush. Hernandez does a good job at 15. He doesn't make it easy for England to do anything. See the full back there just across. Wait, wait, wait. And Corey, eh, it's a speculative pass, isn't it? Stuart, you said on the precipice, I'm going to have to start to ask this kind of question. Mm. Andy Robinson. Well, you know what I'm going to ask, so uh, just give the answer. I know. I, you know, we, Rob Andrews said. My intention is to not change them before the World Cup. That's different between actually not making any changes. And Rob Andrew has to think here because Andy Robinson is the last man left from the previous management that did take England down, that left England in such a difficult position. And it, if England lose this game, it makes Andy Robinson's position almost untenable, I believe. Not necessarily because it's his fault, but just symbolically what he represents. He represents an order that failed and they sacked every other coach except the head man and if they lose today surely you know they have to be even more radical it'll be a new captain it should be a new coach so there are those who believe one of them alongside me that England have to win this match to save the international coaching career of Andy Robinson. But even if they do win this game, we have seen 56 minutes that just... We're not seeing a functioning England team here. The There's lots of effort, but in terms of pure rugby intelligence, the nation is struggling at the moment. Argentina have made two changes. Lazard is on in the pack. Agujo is on in the backs, and this is Hernandez, and this day is also about Argentina and possibly their first win at Twickenham. We mustn't lose sight of that. They are going to scrap in this final quarter for that victory, which means so much to Argentinian rugby. Juan Martín Hernandez is classy. Half volley, 
no hassle. A little dummy, Richards left for dead. And he's aware of everything that's on there. Flood to Moon. Newcastle colleagues. Richards. Bolshaw. Lucy. Richards again. Sarnison. Oh, that's good from Sarnison. Going through and releasing as well to Ben Cohen. Can he get away from his man? Ben Cohen was held. And he dropped the ball as he had to do. He was held in the tackle. Now it's Richards. That went backwards. Sanderson has got England moving here. Bolshaw, Noon. Awful pass from Bolshaw. Behind Noon, it stopped the attack. But England get a penalty. Well, I think they have to take three points here, get themselves within the converted try. That was much more like it from Pat Sanderson. As Toby Flood gets an easy chance to take three points. Now listen to the crowd, they're not happy with England, win, lose or draw. But that is just dreadful for me and Bolshaw. We can dress it up and be nice and he's Jamie Noon overrunning, no. That's just bad basics. There is so much inaccuracy about this performance. Well, a section of the crowd don't like the decision, but England need two scores, and this is a, a give me three points. And Toby Flood, his first kick in international rugby, goes between the posts, and England are back within six points. But you know, the England crowd obviously want to win, but they do want a performance as well, and they haven't been getting it. What they did get here is the pace of Sanderson. And a decent pass, and you think Cohen is in. And Lasada, the replacement lot, comes on with a magnificent tackle on Ben Cohen. That was a fantastic tackle. Not bad in your first cap to come on and do that. It was a try saving tackle. Brilliant by Lasada. And now it's Sanderson. And Richards to flood in his new halfback combination. Perry and Hodgson having been removed. Longo, Hernandez, this will be Floods, he got the ball to Sanderson who throws it in the air to Shooter, and on to Bolshoi, Shooter stayed with him, England wanted to keep the ball alive, and the result is a penalty, and it's Peter Richards now with a quick tap to Bolshaw. Little show and he's through. That is good from Bolshaw. Now he takes on the last man. Bolshaw! Saki did it in the first half. Bolshaw has done it in the second. Now Hernandez is down on the floor injured. Argentina didn't have a full back, which obviously helped. But Bolshaw, aware of the situation, takes full advantage of it and how England needed that key moment there is Peter Richards not going for the corner but tapping and going that's the key because Argentina are disorganised Bolshaw then through the first tackle and the absence of Hernandez means it's Todeschini who's not as quick doesn't have the angles and while the Argentinian fullback is flat on his back one end Peter Richards is sparking the move that gives England the lead. The other superb finish there from Bolshaw. He needed that for his confidence now. Toby Flood, one point down. How he and England need this conversion. Day in, day out, you kick these in training. Here's a test of nerve. James Hook one week. What could Toby Flood do next week? Toby Flood has suffered because of the situation, but... It may cost, we will have to wait and see on that one. England do have the try, and they are right back into this match. But there are still some anxious faces, not just from the coaching staff, but all around in the ground as well. The supporters feeling the tension of this moment. 18 minutes left, Argentina still lead. Sanderson. 
good chase again from the Argentinian pack. They're going to go for 80. From their position, they'll be disappointed to have leaked eight points so quickly after building a nine lead. Floods kick. Aguja steps in and, uh, of course, can do that. He joined the field of play. The ball wasn't out. Hernandez back on his feet now. A little bit too late for Argentina as far as that last try is concerned. Well covered by Peter Richards. That's a lovely pass as well to Bolshaw. Wait, wait! It's a poor kick. Mm. To uh, Contepomi, who doesn't knock him on. His body shape was right to enable him to drop it, if that was the uh, eventuality, no. which it was. Stay free. Stay here. Tee shot. Back on the field after a blood injury is uh, Fernandez Lobby. Well, that's not the best kick from Hernandez, but he's found Longo, it swung back to him. Well, Argentina certainly made the most of that. Yeah, they did, they're really quick to the floor. Longo's playing well at eight as well. And Albacete of Toulouse, he keeps going. He does, he's got an engine, hasn't he? Gomez Cora. No, three, leave him. Hernandez going for the drop goal, it's a long one, but it's uh, a long way wide. No, but it drives England back into their 22. There's Lewis Moody down at the moment, and I think Argentina now, they must keep trying to play, not going for speculative drop goals all the time. They've got to get more points, because you'd expect in the next 15, with the intensity and the emotion around Twickenham, England to get a chance to score something, so Argentina to win, need a bit more yet. We're just gonna play here. Argentina about to make another change, in the meantime we'll go to Dowie. Well, thanks Miles, yeah, a bit of sensible play for once from a half-back, you got Peter Richards tapping and going as Stewart said, and Bolcher now picking out Hassan, the tight head prop, steps off him, and as they say, the rest is history. And Hassan is just about to come off for Celso. Hernandez, trying to catch the wind. Above the stands. Stay tuned, go tuned. Bolshaw calls for a mark. And it's time to get this one away. And when he does, Argentina will make this change. Martin Celso, former Northampton man, you might remember, played on this ground. And he can cut final against Munster six years ago. And Schusterman, now of Leeds, will be about to join the fray as well. Omar Hassan goes off. He's done all right, Hassan as well, hasn't he? Another to lose man. It's been a smart effort from the Argentinian pack. And yet again, an England penalty, line-out infringement, tackled in the air, and there's no argument. Kelvin Dick is absolutely spot on. Another soft penalty. Palmer came on just after Danny Grucock had been penalised for giving such a penalty away. That, uh, that's 11 penalties, and Palmer's just fallen into the Grucock trap. And there's the round the corner languid strike of Hernandez, who has played quite beautifully at fullback. It's a fine line between a fair contest for the ball and uh, an illegal act at the line out. And Palmer crossed it, the referee saw it, and Argentina do bring on Martin Schusterman, ex of Plymouth Albion, now of Leeds, and the man who played in that draw with the Lions. And Argentina about to go one better here, there. a point better off at this stage, 14 minutes away from that first ever Twickenham win. And looking to add to that lead. Once again, they find themselves in England territory. And drop goal range as well, in drop goal range to get beyond the drop goal or penalty for England. With plenty of options on that front, with Todeschini, Contepomi, Hernandez. They'll take their time and they'll just build their way, and if they don't get quick ball in the end, they'll go for three. But at the moment, P shot shown his experience, just doing a bit of clock counting. Has to be careful. Too slow, and Dika will say, now that's enough. P-shot. Well, they're going for the backsmith, Todeschini to Contopomi. 
tackling from Toby Flood, that was uh, strong, but Argentina again staying on their feet in the tackle, now they're dropping back yeah, for the drop goal. Todeschini, and it doesn't come back to them, they just left it one play, too many. Almost paid the price for being too clever, too patient there, didn't they? The temptation to go for it early, they tried to use Contepomi to crash up, but Toby Flood does very well there because he stops Contepomi crossing the gain line. Legs, torso, everything to stop him. Oh, Sanderson's knocked it on at the base. Oh, Pichel, that's brilliant. And that's a penalty. Just held the ball in, didn't release. Last forward, then regret it. Last release. Go team, thanks. And Pichot, of course, points at the uprights. Argentina are going to get another three points. Stewart. Well, I don't know if you're listening, Dowie. <laughs> I hope you're listening to commentary. You should be, my old mate. You played here a lot of times for England. You did some great things at Scrum Hub. How important is that little tap from P shot there that's just dislodged Sanderson Ball and given Argentina a chance? How important is that piece of play? Scrum Hub not doing the flash stuff, doing the bits and pieces. It, it, it could mean somebody's job, Sir Stewart, and you know who I'm talking about again, but you're picking people in wrong positions. Pat Sanderson is not a number eight. I keep banging on about it. You've got to get the key people in those right positions. P shot's an experienced guy. He did one on Perry. He's done one on Richards now, and I tell you what, this cost could cost, could cost England the game. Three points inevitable there for Todeskini. This is how the three points uh, came about. Sanderson knocking on at the base and then it's Kelvin Dika right on the spot he didn't release he was being held and uh, that gave Todeschini a chance to add to his breakaway tried and the other point that he's kicked and now Argentina lead by four I think he actually um, really boosts what Dowie said earlier about get Corey back to eight he doesn't have the dynamism but England needs some stability there P shot from the first minute has found a weak link with England between eight and nine and he has ruthlessly exposed it ruthlessly from the first minute and now well England at least they've got the ball back but you can see they need another one of those tries very quickly now because a pen's not enough England have scored two tries to Argentina's one but they are not in front and Sanderson goes off Corey does go to number eight shooter's been uh, relieved as well brings on Lee Mears Magnus Lund into the uh, back row wearing 19 there you can see the sailman Corey to spend the final 10 minutes of the match in his club position what a long 10 minutes it's going to be oh, for everyone out there now in particular I think Argentina because you know we're zeroing in on England's particular problems they're counting down to well, they've beaten France four times on the trot so let's not get it's too xenophobic about this. But England at Twicken and Pichot said in the week that's special to Argentina, really special, and they're close now. It's gone there. The referee it. will reset the scrum. And we'll also check what's happening on this side. It's close again, but please. Since Argentina have beaten France in their last it's four meetings, again, they won in Marseille. So the Argentina can win in Marseille, they can certainly win at Twickenham, given England's current form. But given England's current form, that is why this next ten minutes is so important to them. Richards, Flood, Allen, can the youngsters do it? That's a forward pass. Move called. The first pass from Toby Flood was a little bit too high. It was forward then from Anthony Allen. Cohen got there early. Not bad pass from Allen, that's a poor pass. And then Cohen gets there too early for him. And if if Anthony Allen actually doesn't give it, there's going to be a scrum anyway because Ben Cohen has just run right in the path of the defenders. That's a sign of anxiety, of that there is no doubt. And there is a lot of that in this stadium at the moment. You almost touch it. I think Will Greenwood said earlier, where's the leadership behind the scrum? It's a question that has to be asked again. Good shove from England there, but Argentina sensing that Longo comes away. And good number eight play there by Gonzalo Longo. Good pressure from England, but again Argentina clear. Bolshaw starting to press that button now inside the final ten. Lucy.
It's out. Bridges can't take it. Todeschini can. Nunes Piasek. And once again, Argentina inside that. England 22. Julian White is in the way, retreating. That's a penalty. And this is a great chance for three more points. Eighth penalty that England have conceded in their own half. Well, Julian White there, I'm afraid. He's had a great afternoon and just retreating backwards. It, it, it's mindless. You know, eight penalties in their own half. And they have leaked a few points from that. It's costing them. Pre World Cup, England were 22 matches unbeaten at Twickenham. Since the World Cup, they've lost six out of 14 on this ground. I wonder what Will Greenwood is thinking, the World Cup man now, of course, part of our team. Yeah. Yeah, Will, as, as we line up this kick, mate, you played in a team with a lot of leaders going into that World Cup. Half-time, you said, where are they behind the scrum? I just... I'm looking, Will, to see who's leading this team now in, in various positions. I can't see much of the halfway line. I'm intrigued to see what you, as a World Cup winner, can make of what England are doing up top now, mate. The ball looks a bit headless at the moment, Stuart. They're under pressure. They're chasing a win. They're going to be seven points behind now. Um, and they're just a... Argentina are ready for them now in the wide channels. They need to jab up the middle a little bit. Send Allen, let him do what he does best for Gloucester. Let's get into that non tackling number 10 and play off there. If you just go wide straight away now, that's where the Argentinians are expecting you to go. Up front, we need to give it some grunt. Those, I'm not talking in the loose. I mean, when we get scrums now, we have to focus on those scrums to give the backs the best possible opportunity to try and break them down first phase. Words of Will Greenwood. And the points for Todeschini again. And just when you might be thinking that the Argentina kicker would be feeling the pressure of the moment, Todeschini looked like the coolest man on the field. And if he's given another chance, he'll probably take that as well. England now are in as big a hole as they have been for a long, long time. One of the reasons they're in the hole is because Argentina's balance behind the scrum has been better in terms of their kicking game. Todesini coming on has really helped them. His kicking game at goal has been excellent, but Hernandez, Contopomi, Todesini, they've been able to take chunks of territory with some excellent tactical kicking, and England have not. England lose the ball at the line -out. And now it's Todeschini to Contopomi by Toby Flood again, but England playing this match on the retreat. Somehow they need to get going forward again with just over five minutes left on the clock. Hernandez yes. kicks down the middle to give Bolshaw a chance. And he's kicking for position. And he's kicking well. Now England really have to scrap at this line out. Yeah, have to try and get across on the Desmas throw. Nothing wrong with Ian Bolshaw's decision then, because the numbers were coming up in terms of Argentinian pressing. It would have been suicidal in a sporting sense to counter from there. He's found the touch. Now England have got to do what Argentina just did and nick a ball. They've got to compete on this. Tom Palmer's there, Kay's in. Got a saw, because Argentina, if they can stabilise the next two, they could have this game. Palmer trying to get across the Desma. They found the ball returning to him, and it was in fact knocked on by England and Tom Palmer, who tried his best to get in, just couldn't quite do it. Lund was in there as well on the floor. I just see how quick Ledesma was as well. He didn't know which side deflected it. You know, he's advancing in years, but this guy, so proud when he plays for Argentina. They've got something special in terms of their spirit here. Remember the celebrations from Mario Ledesma in Cardiff when Argentina drew with the Lions? Well, just imagine what he's going to do if Argentina get this victory, which they are now so close to. Key shot. Stay, stay one, three. Hey, five. Hernandez. This is staying in, it'll be Josh Lucy's. Yes. He's got Bolshaw with him. Lucy to Bolshaw. Cohen also part of the back three, plenty of experience there. Moody. And he's been around two now for a long time with England. And these players 
are digging deep. Magnus Lund from Flood's Pass. Richards, Corey, on from Lucy to Flood. Trying to spin through the tackles. Pony making that tackle. Pick and go from Lucy, Richards. He had his head taken off there. Anthony Allen. England penalty, three points isn't enough. Richards knows it. Three minutes left. Well, it's not a matter of winning at the moment for England, it's salvaging a draw. Okay. That clock is accurate. There's not going to be 86, 87 minutes. We're stopping for injury, so there's two minutes, 57 seconds to go. And Toby Flood, having missed from much closer range, I don't think they're going to ask him to take this kick at goal. They should be looking for the corner. He lifted him up and dropped him to the ground. Steve Walsh has stepped in. It was only going to be a penalty yeah, on my yeah. recommendation, so okay. I to go with this advantage. Yes, he, you know, we'll sure. yeah. he didn't tip him right over. Yeah. Schusterman on Bolshaw and he held 19. him. Not really going to change uh, the situation unless, yes. of course, 19. Argentina lose a man to the Simbin. England have got the penalty 19. anyway. Yeah. And it is now getting into Let's that area where... Here. Yeah. After the ball went... OK, you're very lucky you didn't tip him over. It's dangerous without Good. the ball. OK, the penalty is going to stand here. You keep it out. Schusterman is warned, but it is getting into the area where England are thinking about salvaging the draw and not the win. Can they engineer two scores from here? Well, they've got the score almost immediately from this line-out and then go again. It is possible, it has happened before, but it's a face-saving draw, first of all, for England. Well, they've got to score the try and they've got to kick the conversion. Now, that ain't any formality. They've got to win the line-out, that hasn't been... Good take from Tom Palmer. Argentina resist and hold firm. Martin Corey, the captain, tries to drag him forward a little bit more, but the clock is against them. Another penalty. Rejoining at the side. Well, don't take your time, Martin Corey. Someone's got to bang that ball into touch. Very quickly. It's got to happen now. Thanks. Does flood. In the back. Corey will call for another drive. Bolshaw is staying wide for the crossfield kick. I'd be amazed if Fernandez doesn't read that. He's calling to his teammate. He spotted him. He's on up the field. It's back to Mears. Lee Mears. But Argentina knew about that tactic. They were ready for it. And it's becoming just one score for England now. To try and get the draw. 90 seconds left. Richards, Flood. Toby Flood. Can he be the saviour for England? Peter Richards again, not quite sure what to do. Argentina know what they want to do, and that is to slow it right down. Richards, Lucy, Mears. There's a lot riding on this next minute. Ball slow. Bolshaw still calling on this side. England working towards him. Ingle Argentina, big hit by Gomez Cora, the winger. Pichot's got it. He's kicking this ball downfield, and he might be kicking Argentina to a famous win. Cohen. England got white line fever when they had to keep pace on the ball and move it. But frankly, Argentina have deserved this victory if it is to be theirs. And how about the composure, the class, the kick from Gus Pichot? 32 years of age, he hasn't played this season. He's had groin injuries, he couldn't miss today. Magnificent leadership. Richards, Flood, Allen. Bolshaw, he's got Cohen outside. Ian Bolshaw almost getting away. Desperate tackle back. Push, push. As Argentina know now that this will be the final play of the match. And a loose ball is secured, will get them the win. It's knocked down by Lund, the referee has seen it. And Argentina are going to make that piece of history which could change their history and it could also change 
England's two. Andy Robinson disappears to the changing room. It is that record equaling seventh defeat for England. It is that first ever win at Twickenham for Argentina. There will be a lot to take in and absorb tonight. But for now, as we look at the dejected England faces, we should also reflect on the ecstasy for Argentina and what this means. They have done what they do best. They have made their point today. Oh, haven't they? They were so close to beating the Lions in Cardiff. Today, England were 13-point favourites, but Gus P's shot inspired his team. Rugby's not just about power and strength, and it's not about training for seven days on the trot every week. It's about using your wits, and Gus P's shot, I think, one of the great modern characters in rugby has had his finest hour, not as an individual, but as a leader of this team. Well done, Argentina. You deserve that win. And then it's France after that, as they go for five wins in a row against France. For England, South Africa on the horizon, two test matches. And it will be a record stretch of defeats if England lose next week. Where do England go from here? I think the surgery will have to be major now. Charlie Hodgson felt the surgeon's knife taken off at 50 minutes. I don't know whether it will stop there. You can't blame Andy Robinson on selection. The balance wasn't right on the back row. We've got shortages, but I think Rob Andrew now will have to think very hard about what he does. There's a rot in English rugby. We took a massive step backwards after some of the progress against New Zealand. This is the time for hard action now. Rob Andrew is thinking, you heard the boos at the end, the Twickenham crowd and English rugby, I don't think, will accept a maintenance of the status quo. He's going to say the same, Stuart. We look around as it, in the commentary position here and uh, the faces of the English supporters tell you everything. There is uh, great unrest in the stadium at the moment. They are not happy with what they've seen at all today. They tried to lift the team at various points today. Uh, they started off in the first couple of minutes with an encouraging swing low, sweet chariot. I mean, England could not have asked for any more uh, from their supporters today. It was just that England didn't give them much to shout about. They latched onto the sacking try. They celebrated Bolshaw's run too. But apart from those two moments, England had a terrible day at the office. There's no other way of dressing it up. And Argentina had a great one and a memorable one and one that they will savour for ever and a day. Rob Andrew has a lot on his mind. Well, apart from two individual tries from Saki and Bolshaw, sparked by Peter Richards, England didn't create enough, they didn't look like a streetwise international team, and they didn't even look like a particularly dazzling bunch of novices. In contrast, Argentina played the percentages well, they won the small battles, they controlled the kicking game, and as Rob Andrew looks on there, we cannot now as world champions get away from the fact that this is complete meltdown in English international rugby now it just cannot go on this way and I'm not just saying that a mob mentality should prevail it shouldn't but symbolically now change has to happen England the rut is too deep 18-25 today well done Argentina they were the better team there was no fluke at all but for England now the pit is a very dark deep one and I think Andrew must make changes Argentina came here, they knew exactly what they had to do, and they did it. They stuck to their game plan, and they get their reward. Their first ever win at Twickenham, their first ever try at Twickenham. It's all happened for Augustin Pichot and his men today. There's a lot more to happen for England over the next couple of weeks, and possibly over the next 24, 48 hours or so. England have lost, and for them, it is a terrible defeat. 18-25, the final score. Simon.